Welcome back to the Next Gen Profits Podcast, where your big brother and sister and mentors, Deborah Ann and Michael Faltazen. And today we reveal the secret of your call and show you how to tap into your prophetic authority. But before I do that, did y'all catch yesterday's podcast? Michael and I are still sitting here reeling from the spiritual impartation that Prophet Rich Vera and our apostles gave us yesterday. Reeling is such a strong word. I love it. Feeling that prophetic fire coming out from Prophet Rich Vera. Guys, if you have not listened to yesterday's podcast, stop right now. Click the pause button on this podcast, listen to yesterday's podcast with the apostles, Craig and Colette and Prophet Rich Vera, and then come and listen to this one because we want you to experience the power, the move of God as he transformed not just our lives in the studio, but how he transforms the millions of lives out there. But for today, I want to start off with the story. Rugby is a very big sport in South Africa, and I had the opportunity to play it for most of my high school career. And when I was not on that field, busy playing and pouring out my guts, I was on the sidelines, cheering on, hyping up the other players, running from one end of the field to the next, being that dramatic, crazy, wild prophet, or in this case, cheerleader. And by the time I got to play, I was exhausted, guys. All that running in that Durban heat, it was tiring. I lost my voice from screaming. I had no energy to even communicate to my fellow team members, my fellow players. I had no energy. I was done. Until one day, my coach walked up to me and he said, sit down, Michael. I turned to him. I said, why? And he said, because I have a strategy at work. I have a plan that I know is going to be vital to us winning this game. Because you're so busy running on the sidelines that you're wasting your energy. You're so busy screaming that whenever I give you commands and tactics and strategies to share with the fellow team players, you have no breath. I said, coach, I don't understand. He said, Michael, I have a plan to win this game. I know how to win this game. I know the strategies and what to do, but I need you as my key playmaker to do it. I love this picture. God has a plan in play. And Prophet, you are his key play maker. But he needs you to sit and rest. He doesn't need you to sit and hype up the team. Mm. He doesn't need you to sit and study hard and get all this intense revelation. He just needs you to be at rest, to listen and pay attention to what he is doing. So by the time he puts you in play, By the time he gives you that word to speak or that vision to share, you are ready. You have soaked in the anointing long enough that the power comes up out of you. And we've got three main steps for you to take to help bring you to peace and help you tap into that prophetic authority that is only found in rest. And our first step is to take a nap. And I know that sounds funny, but that's exactly what Jesus did in Mark 4, verses 35 to 41. It says, On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitudes, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was stern asleep on the pillow. And they awoke him saying, teacher, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And then later on in this verse, the Lord stands up, he rebukes the wind, it goes and it stops. And then he turns to his disciples and he's like, why are you so afraid? Don't you have any faith? Mm. And the disciples were all in awe of him. They're like, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Here's the thing. When you sit at rest, Soaking in that presence, listening to the Lord, allowing him to shape who you with that brings rest. Absolutely. You know, just coming back to that story I shared in the beginning, guys, prophet, when you're so busy running around and being distracted, you're losing focus. You're not taking a nap. You're not closing your eyes and listening and trusting God to be like, no, these winds and waves, you will be calm. No, you seize. I call you to peace because Jesus knew that the winds would obey him. Jesus knew that the seas would calm. 
don't lose faith, prophets. Even to you guys that I see in the spirit right now, you've lost so much faith. You're trying to be just like me, that hype man, but you're wasting your energy. Stop wasting your energy. Mm. Rest under the covering that God has given you, prophet. You know, Deborah, it was interesting because just before we podcasted, I, I was speaking to the Lord. And um, one of the key factors that he told me was when you stand under the covering and under his umbrella, let me say it like that, everything else comes into alignment. Mm. Everything else comes and in, falls into place. And prophets understand the power of how covering, how God is actually protecting you in these moments. When you're mm. so busy being distracted and running with your and cheering on your team and listening to the distractions, let your coach come to you and tell you to sit down because you are that key playmaker. Look out for those distractions. Amen. Look out for that noise that is tearing you away from those five minutes of the secret place with Jesus in the mornings. Are you supposed to be sitting and praying for those five minutes? Are you supposed to be taking five minutes to worship every day? Where is that moment where your coach needs you to sit down on the bench to catch your breath and take a nap like Jesus did here? This moment where Jesus sleeps on the boat is right after he's performed the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. He's got thousands of people that were sitting at him, that were snagging at him. It was an intense mm -hmm. ministry session. And he was on his way to another ministry session. So he goes out on this boat really just to take a nap and take a quick minute break because he knew the second half was on its way. And prophet, take this time to rest for the second half because step two is get instruction. Like Michael was saying, his coach had a plan. Mm. He had a very clear strategy on how that rugby game was going to be won. Before he put Michael in play, he took him aside and he explained the strategy. He gave him instruction. Hey, tell your brother on this end to do that. Tell your brother on that part in this position to go and do this. And if you guys can do this, this and this, you are going to win this game. Because he applied his skills, according to the will of the coach to win the game, that game was won. Prophets, I know we're giving you a lot of practical help here, but I want to tear down the veil a little bit and listen to some pro tips that we were about to share with you. When you hear the instructions of God the Father, you know the steps to take. When you hear those instructions, you know the limits that you can go to and you know just how far you can push the limit. But Prophet... Look at where you are positioned today. Come on, take a moment. Just pause right here if you have to. Take a moment. Where are you positioned today? Where is God putting his finger for you to be on the bench for a while, for you to close your eyes and just listen? Don't say a word back to the Lord Jesus. Just listen. Close your eyes and allow him to speak into you, to give you those strategies. When you know the will of your father and you receive his instruction, peace naturally settles on you, okay? So once you've got that instruction, once you know the will of your father, after that quiet time, we move on to step three, serve. Again, Michael had to get out on that field with the strategy and play his part on the team in order for the team to win that game. Prophet, you have a role to play. God has positioned you very specifically in the body of Christ, whether it's under a leader, whether it's in your home, Amen. whether it's in your community, you know where God has positioned you. And if you don't know where God has positioned you, that's where it's time to jump onto live chat and come chat with your big brother come and on. sister, and we help you figure that out. But God has positioned you to serve, to pour out. And when you pour out and serve according to the will of your father and according to the instruction that he has given you, the power will be there. The anointing will be there. When we step up by ourselves in our own strength and our own soul power, it's difficult. It's hard. There's sweat. It's nasty. It's messy. But when we step up in authority and under the cover of our heavenly father, the miracles will happen. Man, I feel like your prophets are just drawing it out of us today. But I love this point that you've just mentioned, Deborah. When we're stepping out in our own strength, you're going to step onto that field exhausted. You're going to step out onto that field not knowing the plan, not knowing the, the winning strategy, not knowing the instructions given from the Lord Jesus. You're going to step out there knowing nothing. 
But when you step out onto the field, knowing what the Lord Jesus wants for you today, you would understand that his authority is what you will be abiding in. You will stand there in his strength. You will know your game strategy. You will know your plans of how to win this game. Mm. Prophet, stop telling God what your instructions are and actually sit down for a while and allow him to give you his instructions. Flip the script here. Amen. This is no longer a time for you to be in the flesh, each one of you. So throughout this podcast, we mentioned three main points. Step number one, take a nap. Rest. Step number two, get instructions. Get that download from the Lord Jesus to know what your instructions are so that you can win that match. And lastly, serve. Jesus washed his disciples' feet. He was the greatest servant, the Bible says. He served Mm. those he loved. He knew. He was the son of God. You really think all that time he was spending in the gardens and alone time with his father in the wilderness, he wasn't getting the download and he knew what was going to happen? Come on. Oh no, he knew what part he was called to play on this earth. He spent time with his father resting, taking naps in boats and, you know, all this crazy stuff. He knew what his purpose was. So when he stepped out to serve, he knew who he was serving and he knew why he was serving. So I want to leave you with three very important questions. One, who were you before you decided to become a next-gen prophet? Two, who are you today? What do you look like? There's no wrong answer here. And finally, three, who do you want to become? Because when you know the answer to these three questions and you take that time to sit and take a nap and rest, you will then have an unshakable faith to step out and walk on water.